morning, everyone, and welcome to RSSDI Diabetes Bites. Today is World Obesity Day, and the reason we observe it is only to create more awareness. We are in the middle of an obesity epidemic crisis, and I'm not too wrong from that. And our experts today will definitely agree and emphasize on the same. However, these are awkward conversations amongst physicians, between physicians and patients, and pa most patients, because most are in denial. Let's see what we can change today with this program and the impact it creates on your minds. May I have the honor, I have the honor today of uh, having two wonderful guests who are really experts in the field of obesity. Uh, and we, uh, Dr. Bridge Makar, sir, who is the president of RSSDI and also an obesity expert, will also be joining us soon. Dr. Neetau, who is a senior physician diabetologist from the city of Belgaum. Welcome to the show. She's also the RSSDI obesity joining her. Nawal Vikrasi is a senior physician and dermatologist from the city of New Delhi. Welcome, sir. He is also the part of the RSSDI Obesity Task Force. They, uh, they and the entire team has uh, done uh, some fantastic work in this field, and I believe there's a campaign campaign in the offing as well. So, without much ado, maybe we can start with the discussion that we are here for today. Uh, let me start with Dr. Neeta. Uh, Dr. Neeta, do you think, in your opinion, uh, often patients, because they are in denial, they feel that they are just a little overweight. Uh, so, you know, and nothing is really wrong with them. So, do you think there is a category called, you know, healthy overweight or healthy obese, as we used to think there is? Yeah. Thanks for that question, Purvi, because this is so very common. Uh, people don't even realize that they're overweight or obese, or if they are, they think that that is okay and uh, they're fine. They're going about their daily duties. They do not have diabetes. They do not have blood pressure. So it doesn't really matter much. But that could just be a phase in transition. It may not remain like that because years of overweight and obesity will take a toll on the body at some time in the future. And if it is not uh, stemmed in time, they could actually get all those diseases. Added to that, what is forgotten is the mechanical problems that are associated with overweight and obesity, something called sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Or there could also be things like cancer that is associated with uh, obesity. So these are all the things that can come in a little later. So uh, they creep up slowly. So there is no such thing as healthy overweight or healthy obese, which can happen at that point of time, but that it could be a harbinger of things to come. So it's very important that it has to be prevented, treated, and nipped in the bud. Thank you. Thank you for beautifully clarifying that, because I think that's where the problem is, that the acceptance is so low. Uh, but understanding that it's the mother of uh, NCDs or non-communicable diseases is the key. So thank you very much for clarifying that. And with that, I'll move on to uh, Dr. Naval Vikram, sir. Uh, welcome once again. It's the first time on uh, Diabetes Bites, I suppose. And we're very excited to have you both here. So, sir, what should we, uh, you know, we be more concerned about when we are trying to lose weight? Often patients, uh, you know, they, they want to know whether it's the weight or the inches or the body fat percentage. So, what exactly are we more concerned about and uh, what should we be tracking? Thank you, Dr. Purvi. And that's a very relevant question because what uh, you should do. In my opinion, I think body fat percentage, that is the most important uh, thing. Uh, because if you are losing weight, one tends to lose a lean mass also along with it. That is the good uh, component of your body composition. So 
if you lose lean mass that becomes counterproductive and that is why percentage body fat is the main thing because the problems of obesity arise from excessive body fat uh, excessive fat in the body that is the main culprit you see that is why i would in my opinion percentage body fat is the first thing and along with that everything else comes the inches also go along with that and the metabolic benefits i would say the benefits in prevention of the chronic diseases like diabetes or uh, management improvement in these diseases is happens only if you lose body fat great thank you so much again for being so succinctly clear about this um i i think i uh, would request you to comment on you know where clinics or where uh, even in primary care facilities where we do not probably have these advanced machines to look at the body fat analysis or for example you know in the uh, gymnasiums often we have uh, body fat uh, analyzers but we don't know if they are standardized they are validated we have no clue about the machines that are being used but they are often used by untrained professionals and uh, you know a report is churned out and uh, they go by that so if you can give us some simple tips as to what patients can look out for in case they, they do not have uh, access to this uh, to a well uh, you know calibrated machine uh, report or uh, you know interpretation of the same if you can just give us some quick tips okay so uh the the most common measure that we use as a uh, indicator of obesity is body mass index it simply put your weight in kg is divided by your height square in meters so that is the index which is used worldwide to define obesity but it may not be absolutely correct because it takes into account everything lean and fat but anyway it is an indicator so one has to keep that uh, uh, cut off of 25 for indians it is lower in indians because we develop problems at a lower bmi that is number 1 number 2 is the sim another simple measure is the your waist circumference what is your uh, waist circumference i think that is uh, very important and a simple measure which can be done for that you don't need any uh, advanced machines and keep your waist below 90 cm for the men and for women keep it below 80 cm that is enough and that will be uh, beneficial and that indicates in fact because our population the indian population tends to have more fat in the abdominal region around the organs in the abdomen so that is i think uh, most uh, deleterious uh, fat which one can accumulate so having a, a waist circumference below the cut off which i mentioned is useful try to maintain that and try to decrease it from if you are over it and one another simple uh, measure is keep your waist half of your height that's a very very simple thing your waist should not go more than half of your height i think that uh, will help you a lot excellent tips thank you so much dr vikram sir uh, my next question to dr neeta uh, so you know often uh, patients will come and say that yes uh, my doctor has started me on a, a medication that's not just good for sugars but also for the for my weight and i seem to have lost a reasonable uh, amount in you know say 6 months or so do i really need to continue the medication uh, i really would like to stop it Uh, you know how uh, the side effects of drugs are uh, never something that uh, one wants to deal with so i have lost uh, you know i may be probably needed to lose 20 kilos but i've lost 10 12 kilos so is that enough and can i stop the medication now what how would you tackle that yeah or how should we should look yeah thank you purvi there are two ways to look at this so number one is one needs to understand weight loss in the context of what happens after the initial period of weight loss that's called the intensive phase so after you have lost some weight one must remember that there are some metabolic adaptations or hormonal changes that occur in the body because of which the body tries to pull you back to your old weight despite all your efforts and medication like this that you have mentioned 
can help you to mitigate those hormonal adaptations. That is number one. Number two is that weight regain is the rule whether you have done lifestyle modification or whether you have uh, used medication. And because like, uh, weight regain is a rule, you need something to keep your weight where it was. That means you need to maintain that lost weight. And pharmacotherapy or drugs like this can help. Not to say that you can never get off it, but it may be difficult to get off it. In this case that you have talked about, it is also being used as an anti-glycemic. Uh, that is, it is also being used for blood sugar. So that's why it needs to be continued. Because if it is not, one, the sugars may shoot up. Second, the weight also may start to go up. Although there is no exact uh, number of months or years that have been said in literature for which you need to continue such drugs it is only mentioned that it is used long term that long term could actually be few months few years we don't really know yet but we can't just stop it it might uh, make the person put on weight once again so the other part is that if a robust lifestyle program is adhered to there could be some patients who could get off the drug Wonderful. I think that was really explained well because this is a common query that patients have. Even when we start something like that, uh, you know, they want to know, but how long will I have to take it? Yeah. Uh, not really keeping in mind that probably it took years to gain that kind of weight and, uh, you know, it's not easy to get that off. But the risk-benefit ratio is something that we should probably consider. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the next question is uh, a bit of a you know, chicken and egg story because uh, we are always wondering what is it that we are chasing when we are trying to lose weight. Uh, and I'd like both our experts to come in on that one after the other. Uh, so for weight loss, what is more important? Reduce calories or exercise or decreasing carbohydrates or fats in the diet? Maybe yeah. we can start with Dr. Victor. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Dr. Neeta. Sure. Okay. So, uh, research shows, and definitely, uh, I would also say that uh, for the period of weight loss per se, it is the calories that matter, which means it's the diet that matters. And probably a low carb diet, uh, moderate protein uh, is a good diet to follow. Uh, having said that, the exercise part definitely is important but its importance as far as weight is concerned comes in a little later for weight maintenance so uh, uh, it is always said that you cannot outrun a bad diet that means however uh, much, uh, you exercise you cannot outrun a bad diet so which means to say that a bad diet uh, is a big no-no so it's not like someone says that I can eat whatever I want as long as I exercise more. That's not going to happen and that's not going to lead to weight loss. So exercise is important for its other benefits and for weight maintenance, but not exactly during the weight loss period of a, diet, of a program. Great. I think, uh, you know, you really nailed it. Uh, and thank you for that enlightening uh, message because uh, I think it's not just for physicians who manage obesity, but it's also for patients to understand that why are they being, uh, you know, put in that kind of a program or why is the doctor not insisting on that much of exercise during the active weight loss period and just asking them to be active and definitely, you know, get some amount of, uh, say, flexibility, conditioning exercises or even um, a bit of cardio. Uh, Dr. Vikram, may we have your comment, please? I perfectly agree <clears throat> with Dr. Neeta that uh, calorie restriction is the most important thing during the period of weight loss because calories are what matters. What type of diet you are going to have low carbohydrate, low fat, it depends on the conditions that you have along with obesity. But calories is the bottom line. Exercise, it helps in maintaining and exercise also probably helps in uh, maintaining or decreasing the loss of lean mass. So if you're exercising, you're the 
as i said earlier lean mass also is lost during the weight uh, when you, when you lose weight you lose lean mass as well so prevention of loss of lean mass may be uh, exercise may be more effective in that but calories is the bottom line fantastic uh, so like you said that you know we are also losing lean mass when we are trying to lose weight and exercise can stop that uh, i just uh, you know maybe you can uh, emphasize more on the fact that we also need to supplement well during the weight loss phase because uh, sometimes while restricting calories and uh, even some of the macronutrients we probably are missing out on some if a quick comment on that sir I think the <clears throat> low carbohydrate and uh, adequate intake, or maybe slight high, higher intake of uh, proteins, will do the trick of uh, weight loss along with preserving the loss of lean mass. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Uh, the next question is uh, a bit of uh, a digression from. Uh, just obesity but uh, you know we know that obesity and diabetes are coexistent uh, a lot of times and obesity is probably the forerunner of uh, you know other NCDs including diabetes so patients want to know that uh, you know if if I lose weight uh, is that also going to help me reverse diabetes and uh, say I've been uh, you know I've had diabetes for 10 years 10 years plus uh, is it still possible to reverse diabetes if I really lose the weight? Right. So, uh, the reversal of diabetes, the main determinant of reversal of diabetes, the main determinant of prevention of diabetes, for both it is weight loss. It has been seen extensively in all research. It has been seen in our own research as well that weight loss is the key. Secondly, it is not just a few kgs of weight loss, but it is substantial weight loss. The reason that you need substantial weight loss more than 10 kilos for prevention or for reversal of diabetes is that only when you lose upwards of 10 kilos do you manage to uh, get the fat out of the organs. So when you put on a lot of weight, fat is deposited in the organs importantly for us it's in the liver and the pancreas so unless you lose upwards of 10 to 12 kilos you will not mobilize the fat from the liver and the pancreas and so you will not in the true sense prevent or reverse diabetes and therefore substantial weight loss not just weight loss is the key determinant towards prevention as well as reversal of diabetes <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you so much for that uh, insight because uh, I think that's uh, that's a question uh, on the fore of so many minds because uh, people are wondering, uh, you know, these commercial programs are everywhere and they are often wondering uh, if uh, they are going to be able to reverse diabetes. But I think you explained how it's possible and uh, how uh, can that be targeted. With that, we welcome uh, Dr. Bridgemakar, sir, our RSSDI president uh, and a Good senior morning, physician. Everyone. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Great. So now you're on the hot seat, sir, and uh, we'd like to know, uh, often uh, patients uh, will say that, you know, we're just uh, healthy or a little overweight, but there are no symptoms and I'm perfectly fine. Uh, nothing, nothing's really wrong. Uh, so does anything need to really change? Is there a need to lose weight? And if so, how much uh, weight loss should be targeted? If you can comment so quickly on that. So first thing is uh, one has to identify weight as you know uh, a problem. First thing is when we say that I have slightly extra weight or I am you know not obese, I am maybe you know mildly overweight. We actually don't relate weight to the seriousness of problem. Weight is not identified as obesity. Problem is that we think it is just weight, but we have to understand that what we are measuring as weight is a surrogate measure of excess fat in the body. It is not the excess weight of muscle. It is not the excess weight of bones or organs. 
it is the fat which is increased so the biggest problem is we don't identify obesity as a serious illness or a disease we don't identify obesity as a disease because we are just looking at weight we are not looking weight as a indirect measure of fat so minute you look at weight and you think you know you visualize this as excess fat in the body and also visualize that this fat is going to damage every single organ in your body then possibly the whole perspective is going to change problem is we don't have a direct measure of fat <clears throat> right so first thing is identification of obesity as a serious problem and there are number of studies which have shown that even if people who have increased body weight which may be in the overweight range still have high risk of developing comorbidities or the you know complications related to obesity in due course of time so this may be only a phase in transition where you may appear healthy but once you have gained weight you are moving towards you are already on that trajectory to become unhealthy so you have to take it seriously second thing is in indian setting unfortunately our ethnic or genetic makeup is such our our we are programmed to store more fat even at lower body weight so if we look at the definition of obesity we are defined obese at a cut off of body mass index of 25 as compared to a cut off taken for western population at 30 and for the same body mass index indian people have twice as high fat as compared to people in western population and that is why we are more prone to get obesity related comorbidities like diabetes like uh, you know blood pressure like coronary artery disease at lower levels of body weight or body mass index as compared to western population so there are problems in india are one we have smaller bodies weight uh, compared to western population we may not look you know fat but we are still fat second thing is we have fat deposited in the wrong areas the areas where deposition of fat is related to increased risk we don't have more fat under the skin but we have more fat inside the belly so we have more fat inside the organs or around the organs more fat inside the blood vessels which is all leading to the damaging effects so we have to understand that it is not just body weight that we are looking at the minute we are saying that your body weight is high it should connect with excess fat and excess fat at wrong places and person should take it seriously so every single person who has increased body weight must focus on maintaining a normal body moving it towards normal or at least making sure that does not gain further and should be having a regular healthy lifestyle to reduce the risk of complications of obesity very well said sir a lot of key messages given uh, out there uh, with respect to obesity overweight and the misconception around it as well and i think this is important uh, information particularly as we are paying this tribute on world obesity day we do want people to know more about this so that they can you know stop it or they can they can reverse uh, this or you know start controlling it uh, much better uh, in the earlier years rather than waiting for any comorbidity to develop so great message thank you sir uh, well dr vikram uh, sir is uh, obesity more or are women more prone to uh, overweight obesity and uh, why is that so yeah uh, thank you purvi that's a important question because uh, all the research and all the surveys which show that the prevalence of obesity is higher in women and of course women are more prone to develop obesity one simple fact that they undergo a lot of physiological changes throughout their life than what we men undergo there is puberty there is uh, puberty induced insulin resistance is there then there is pregnancy is a time when they have uh, uh, a more weight gain and there's a postpartum period when they have 
then they are at increased risk of uh, gaining weight and its related problems and then there is menopause so so many hormonal and physiological changes occurring throughout the life put women at risk of developing obesity and the obesity related uh, problems such as diabetes heart disease so uh, yes women definitely are more prone to develop these problems than men great i think uh, that was a very clear and uh, a very well answered uh, question question and thank you for that sir uh, dr neeta i know you have worked with uh, children as well uh, and especially those who are overweight or obese and we see that this burgeoning uh, epidemic is really uh, affecting them especially post uh, the pandemic i think children have been or adolescents have been really uh you know facing this where they are studying for increase hours in front of the computers or just uh, you know uh, being di digitally engaged uh that's making them sit la lack of physical activity and then just the exposure to junk food etc etc uh what is your message for them today and how should we really start educating them and informing them uh on preventing obesity at this young age yeah so at the community or personal level it's important to sensitize parents and teachers about the activities that the children engage in especially with relation to screen time and processed food however uh, doing this just at the community or personal level is not enough a uh, policy change is very important because of the obesogenic environment for example compulsion of more physical activity in school compulsion of getting better food available for children sensitization of the parents and then uh, you know at the policy level uh, the processed food has to be labeled and it has to be uh, you know there has to be a like a warning like how you have for smoking so uh, these kind of policy changes are difficult but at the teacher level at the parent level at the community level a lot of messages need to go out uh there have to be different ways of reducing screen time and different ways of uh, uh getting them to eat better and get more active so the, the because prevention of obesity is actually the real treatment once obesity sets in it is a disease and then you are battling it forever so prevention is the key and childhood is the time so that's why it's very important that uh, these kind of messages go out to parents as well as to teachers uh, to help stem this epidemic for the future your passion for the uh, the this uh, you know problem is uh, and uh, the zest to uh, sort of uh, mitigate it is so obvious and thank you for that one wonderful tagline as well uh, so th thanks a lot for that and with that i think we are coming towards the end uh, but since this is a policy question i'd like to open dr uh, makar sir as well sir a quick comment on what can we do to stop or prevent adolescent obesity uh, today that we are really faced with see for uh, a problem of uh, this magnitude which is largely related to our uh, changes uh, you know fast changes that are happening in lifestyle i think the most important thing is awareness if you create awareness especially at now school children level and even before at the level of teachers i think is going to make a lot of difference because uh, you know whatever we may do in terms of uh, changing the policy uh, there are policies like you know applying sugar tax making the junk food more expensive and so on uh you cannot enforce a lot of it but once it happens because of will because of understanding it changes i'll give you a very you know small example uh look back say maybe 10 to 15 years we all used to burn a lot of crackers during diwali it used to be a big time you know crackers people children would be busting crackers even 10 days before diwali now look at the current scenario no child wants to burn crackers 
because they have been so much programmed in the school that they are bad they are causing pollution noise pollution all that stuff so their programming has changed and i think similar programming requires for tackling obesity also especially the adolescent oh my really well said sir thank you for that i think that programming is uh, what is required and that movement needs to be you know uh, gather more momentum so and yes that, that's that change you know it is not that ch it change the children who are becoming younger because now children don't want to get involved with that the parents are also off that the whole family goes off that behavior you know why why we Absolutely. why the parents were burning crackers they were burning it for children now children don't want parents are you know okay fine you don't want we don't want. true absolutely true and i think uh, that's a great analogy we can definitely adapt to this uh, important health issue or crisis that we are facing as well uh, and my heart really goes out to them because uh, if we inform them in time there is a great chance that this can reverse or stop and they can lead healthier lives in the future uh with that uh, we're almost uh, towards the end of our program and i'd love a message or a tagline or uh, you know anything that uh, each of our esteemed experts have to say today for our audience we can start with dr vikram yeah so this world obesity day i think the first thing is let's start identifying obesity as a disease not just a cosmetic problem and start working towards it and uh, start working towards preventing and managing obesity if we want to uh, prevent the further chronic diseases great thank you thank you so much for that uh, wonderful message uh, dr neeta yeah my message uh, in addition to what dr navel vikram said is obesity treatment can save lives but if done in the properly medically supervised fashion so it should be tackled but in the right way great i love how we are co covering all the different aspects of uh, obesity and obesity management uh, and the finale from dr makkar sir so um, you know i uh, tweeted in the morning uh, on our uh, website also uh, and i'll just repeat that message uh, uh, my message would be obesity is mother of all adult life diseases let's take it seriously excellent sir thank you a uh, simple but very direct and definitive so thank you for uh, the wonderful messages uh, i think this has been the most uh, most impactful half hour that i have spent in a long time because in such a short time uh, our experts have tackled uh, so many different questions and so many different perspectives a uh, big big thank you to all of you it's uh, prime time uh, clinic time and uh, you all have uh, taken the effort to come for rssti diabetes bites uh, to on this world obesity day it's a great privilege and honor for all of us and thank you again for um, championing this cause and inspiring all of us to take it up further uh, so big thank you to makkar sir dr anita and thank you everyone Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.